Welcome to the September 7th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. I will now call the meeting to order at 7.02. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Comments of public interest. This portion of the meeting is to allow up to three minutes per speaker with 30 total minutes on items of interest or concern and not on items that are on the current agenda. The Planning and Zoning Commission may not discuss these items but may respond with factual or policy information. The Planning and Zoning Commission may choose to place the item on a future agenda. <clears throat> Do we have any speakers? We do. We have Richard Weira online. Mr. Weira, are you with us? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I have a question regarding PSP 2021-013. Uh, That's the uh, Legacy Square uh, development plan for Custer. Uh, in reviewing the plant that was put before the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission on 6-7, uh, I'm observing and um, uh, there's really not enough parking there. I'm seeing centralized parking that says 296 spaces uh, in, in the center of the, the complex. And my question is, that doesn't appear to be enough parking uh, as per uh, the uh, MF3 multifamily residence uh, dated uh, February 28, 2019 of the plan of any ordinance. It states uh, clearly part uh, dot four parking requirements, two points. Uh, one, that there should be two parking spaces per dwelling unit. And then part B is that uh, the off-street parking spaces designated for each dwelling unit shall be located within 100 feet of the dwelling unit serviced by such spaces. And that looks like neither of those conditions are met. Uh, my interest, uh, particularly as I live in one of the adjacent neighborhoods, that plan development, and uh, many of the residents are concerned of spillover parking, uh, as a result of this. And I imagine that uh, the developer wants to maximize rentable space, but at the same time, the zoning ordinance requires them uh, to provide adequate parking space. Uh, that, that's all the comments I have. Mr. Hill. Yes, good evening, Mr. Weir. This is Eric Hill, I'm senior planning manager. We did review the preliminary site plan for parking. It does meet the city's zoning ordinance requirements. Uh, there's both the garage as well as surface parking spaces on that property. I'd be glad to um, have our staff reach out to you and review the plan with you uh, more specifically so that you can see the parking situation. But we did review that and it is uh, in conformance with the city's ordinance. I, I would appreciate that, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rara. Do we have any further speaker cards? No, we do not. All right. Then we'll move to our consent agenda. Consent agenda. The consent agenda will be acted upon in one motion and contains items which are routine and typically non-controversial. Items may be removed from this agenda for individual discussion by commissioners, staff, or any citizen. The presiding officer will establish time limits based upon the number of speaker requests. Does anybody have anything they want to remove from the consent agenda? Move approval of consent agenda. Right, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda by Commissioner Downs with a second by Commissioner Stone. Please cast your vote. And the consent agenda carries with a vote of eight to zero. We'll move to our first item of the night. Agenda item number 1A is a public hearing zoning case 2021-012 and revised site plan for the Home Depot North Central Expressway Edition Block 1, Lots 1R and 3, submitted under the Interim Comprehensive Plan. 
Request to amend plan development 472 corridor commercial on 10.8 acres located at the southeast corner of U.S. Highway 75 and 13th 14th connector in order to modify the adopted site plan and develop standards. Zone plan development 472 corridor commercial with specific use permit number 618 for truck bus leasing HD development properties and LP and SCSD Fennel Management LLC are the applicants on agenda item number one. Agenda item number 1B is a public hearing preliminary replat. The Home Depot North Central Expressway Edition Block 1 Lots 1 Lot 1R. It's a superstore on two lots on 10.8 acres located at the southeast corner of U.S. Highway 75 and 13th 14th Connector. Zone Plan Development 472 Corridor Commercial with Specific Use Permit Number 618 for Truck Bus Leasing. Applicant is HD Development Properties LP. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Donna Folletta, Planner with the Planning Department. This is a request to amend the site plan and associated development standards adopted by Plan Development 472 Corridor Commercial to propose a building expansion, open storage areas, and compact construction equipment. In 1993, a zoning case was approved for the property, which required the site plan to be adopted into the PD to limit the locations of buildings and building expansions. The subject property is shown on yellow on the slide. There is an existing single family residence on the north side, single family residence on the east side, and commercial properties along the north, south, and west sides. A revised site plan is submitted as part of this zoning request. The revised site plan shows the building expansion, compact construction equipment spaces, and the open storage. The land use plan designates the subject property as freeway commercial. The requested amendments to the site plan are consistent with the existing development. They are intended to respect the adjacent single family residents through maintaining existing screening and meeting the required setbacks. This, re this request is in conformance with the FC designation. The applicant is adding a tool rental center and storage area to the east side of the building. The city has specific setback requirements for superstores detailed in the zoning ordinance. However, these criteria do not apply to properties developed prior to 2005, and the subject property was developed in 1991, so the setback requirements do not apply. The proposed tool rental center and storage will be screened by the existing masonry and landscape screening wall, shown on the picture. The applicant is requesting an additional 4,561 square feet of open storage. The applicant has worked with property standards to ensure these are appropriate locations for open storage and to address open storage issues that have happened in the past. Also as part of this request, the applicant will be placing signage along the existing landscape screen wall on the north side of the property to ensure the wall remains solid. Lastly, a stipulation is being added that will allow open storage into the setback along 13th and 14th connector. The applicant is also requesting 10 parking spaces to be used for compact construction equipment. These spaces are 180 feet away from the residential zoning district boundary on the east side, so the residential adjacency standards do not apply, and the equipment will be screened from the residence with the six-foot masonry screen wall that we previously saw. We did receive one response in opposition in the 200-foot buffer. And we received two responses total, one in support and one in opposition. As a B item to this request, the applicant has submitted a preliminary replot. The purpose of the preliminary replot is to relocate a water line necessary for the building expansion. To summarize, this request is in conformance with the recommendations of the comprehensive plan and the request will meet the screening, setback, and residential adjacency requirements of the zoning ordinance. The zoning case and revised site plan are recommended for approval subject to the PD stipulation shown on the screen and the preliminary replot is recommended for approval subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department. 
That concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. We have uh, any commitment from uh, Home Depot that the six foot masonry wall will be tall enough to hide whatever it is they're putting back there? I mean, are they going to stack up higher than six feet? Do we know? That will go higher than six feet. The six feet wall should be sufficient screening. Yep. The ordinance does require them to fully screen those materials. So if they exceeded uh, the height of that wall, they would, the city could uh, perform enforcement on that issue. So it should be limited to six feet. Good. Thank you. Any further questions for staff? Commissioner Horn? Did, <clears throat> did you have any discussions with uh, HD with regards to this open storage and environmental? For instance, they're going to put out their equipment, or construction equipment, which is notorious for leaking petroleum, oil, and lubricant. And this being so close to residential areas, have we had any uh, discussions about monitoring and making sure they police themselves if we grant them this uh, this uh, zoning case? Sure. Property standards will ensure that the compacting construction equipment is designated to these 10 spaces. And if there are complaints, property standards can go out there and give them a notice. Is there any routine monitoring of, of any of this equipment yards that we go out there and look? I mean, does property standards go out there and do this, re <coughs> this routine monitoring? Mr. Hill, do you know the answer to that? Uh, it's typically done on a complaint basis. Um, our property standards division has worked with Home Depot staff over the years with their locations as they do periodically have uh, seasonal situations and storage situations. So it, they do typically monitor these a little bit more closely, but in most instances, it would be a complaint basis before we found out if there was a problem. But I believe the applicant's here and they can probably address that issue as well. Commissioner Downs? Yeah, I want to clarify something that I read in the the um, evaluation of the project that you put together. One of the purposes of this is to resolve an ongoing issue with open storage that the neighbors have filed complaints about. Um, and it looks like you're relocating it. Is that is that what's happening here? We're, we're trading one type of open storage for another type of open storage? So they have some existing open storage areas, but that was not sufficient. So we met with the applicant and property standards and came up with appropriate locations for the open storage to prevent future violations. Okay. And I know that uh, in the past, whether sitting here for PNZ or council, there's been discussions around the problem with the enforcement with Home Depot is that they're not, I guess, a local based company. And so getting actually being able to serve someone uh, with that, is that still an ongoing, that situation has not changed? I, th I think the applicant may speak to this. We, we typically are able to uh, serve them notice of violation um, there. They have been responsive in the past when we've done that. So I think the, the difficulty we have sometimes is that staff tends to turn over. They have a new manager every year, two years at the store. And then at that point, storage becomes an issue. We did talk to um, the Home Depot um, more senior staff, and they suggested these recommendations uh, to hopefully clear up those issues. They also talked about doing things like uh, putting paint striping uh, on the ground. So it would be a little bit clearer uh, if their internal staff changes as to where the open storage lies. So I think we've got that um, worked out, but again, they're, they're here and may be able to answer that question better. Uh, thank you. Any further questions for staff? All right. Thank you. We'll open the public hearing. Does the applicant wish to address the commission? Yes, he does. And before I do uh, announce him, I need to apologize to the commission. I neglected to uh, read um, items for consideration so i would like to do that at this point public hearing items applicants are limited to 15 minutes presentation time with a five minute rebuttal if needed remaining speakers are limited to 13 total minutes of testimony time with three minutes assigned per speaker the presiding officer may modify, modify these times as deemed necessary and we have scott momer that would like to address the commission Mr. Miller? 
Yes, this is uh, Scott Momer. I'm the Site Development Coordinator for Home Depot. I've been working with Home Depot well over 27 years now, and part of what we do for them is uh, related to code violation and expansion like this. Um, we're pleased to be able to bring this expansion forward that uh, will definitely be a win-win for the community, the customer, the city, and everyone involved in home improvement. As part of it, we work with staff to um, cipher through the prior complaints related to storage and visibility and so forth. Years ago, we, we looked at those issues and now we're able to circle back uh, to come up with a resolution. Um, I think one of the comments related to the um, um, getting in touch with Home Depot, um, every store does have a store manager or an operation manager, actually both, but a, definitely a store manager. So they're usually at the store except for Tuesdays and Wednesday. Um, so if there ever is an issue, staff knows they can talk to the manager who also has a district manager. Having said that, what, what we've done in working with staff to come up with the uh, areas um, and then the additional screening, uh, it, it does provide a plan that the city has obviously this is what we're looking at tonight but we also create what we call a internal osrp operation restriction placard that we put in the manager's office so that it's crystal clear of where these areas are and this must remain in his office so that anybody could see it and we do have manager changes that do occur. Some stores every few years, some stores maybe every five, six years. And if somebody's lucky enough, they get a manager there for quite a while. Um, so with this proposed project, uh, we have the expansion of the tool rental center. Can I share my screen? Uh, I don't believe we have the ability for you to share your screen, but we would appreciate if you could turn on your video. I think we may have lost him there. Oh, I think I'm back. There you are. Actually, now I do have full visibility. Ah, perfect. I can share. Oh, you cannot. Huh? Yeah, Mr. Momer, if you could turn your video on for us, please. I don't believe that you have the ability to share your presentation, but we do need to, you to share your video. Um, so I do have the video on. Okay, so we, we, we I, can see you now, but um, we can't share your presentation. So if you'll just walk us through the rest of it, that would be good. Okay, perfect. Uh, so this is a proposed expansion for a tool rental center that's on the side of the building that's roughly 20 feet wide and about 160 feet long. And it's connected to the building. So there's access internally in the building to it with a large roll-up door inside the building. And then there's a front door uh, to the um, tool rental center along with a um, area where mainly we have ladders and so forth uh, stored in the back for people to rent. Um, it's actually a very high item of rental is uh, ladders. Uh, associated with that is a display area for the rental of the equipment and to answer your question regarding our uh, equipment rental years ago um, 
we used to utilize a third party vendor for rental of equipment. And in this particular case, or in all cases now, Home Depot has their own internal equipment rental. Um, no repairs, nothing is done on site. We've actually built several what we call ROFs, and these are places where the equipment goes to get um, uh, uh, maintained or taken care of. Um, so it's always in pristine condition, you know, at the store, at the site. Um, we actually have one um, that's just on the other side of the airport that services this vast area for equipment. So they are taken care of off-site, not on-site um, for the uh, project. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Do we have any additional speaker cards on this item? No, we do not. All right. I will close the public hearing. You can find comments and discussion to the commission and staff. I recommend approval subject to the restrictions presented by staff. All right. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Gibbons uh, with the subject to the re uh, proposed restrictions and a second by Commissioner Samara. Please cast your vote. And agenda item 1A carries with a vote of eight to zero. Now we need to vote, or we need a motion on 1B. Uh, move approval subject to uh, City Council approving approval of zoning case 2021-012 and additions and deletions to the engineering plans as required by the engineering, engineering department. Second. Right. We have a motion to approve subject to the recommendations uh, provided by, or made by Commissioner Gibbons with a second by Commissioner Stone. I'm sorry, Commissioner Downs, my apologies. <laughs> Please cast your vote. And agenda item number 1B carries with a vote of 8 to 0. Our next item is agenda item 2A. Agenda item number 2A is a public hearing zoning case 2021-014. This is a request to amend Plan Development 195 cor Corridor Commercial on 8.0 acres located on the south side of Park Boulevard, 385 feet east of Alma Drive to allow car wash as a permanent permitted use and to modify development standards, which may include but are not limited to noise uh, mitigation. Zone Plan Development 195 Corridor Commercial. Agenda item number 2B is a concept plan, Chisholm Place Retail number 1, Block A, Lot 4. Car wash on one lot on 1.4 acres located on the south side of Park Boulevard, 390 feet east of Alma Drive. Zone Plan Development 195 Corridor Commercial. The applicant for both 2A and B are Park Alma Plano Venture number 1 LP. This is a request to amend Plan Development 195 Corridor Commercial to allow car wash as a permitted use. The subject property is shown in yellow. There is an existing multifamily development on the north side of Park Boulevard, park land on the east side, and commercial properties on the south and west sides. A concept plan is submitted um, as Item 2B, the concept plan shows the proposed car wash. PD-195 was established in 2007 to allow mini warehouse use. At that time, car washes were listed as a restricted use in the PD because it was considered an inappropriate use in this location. The goal of the PD was to allow the mini warehouse and limit uses that will have a negative impact on the future Spring Creek Walk. The land use plan designates the subject property as freeway commercial. Car wash is not specifically defined in the land use element. However, car wash is a type of commercial development and may generally be supported by the FC land designation. Lastly, this request is not in conformance with the urban design element of the comprehensive plan. The Spring Creek Walk is a special development concept for 160 acres located on the west side of U.S. Highway 75 between Park Boulevard and Calm Creek Mall. 
The intent of the plan is to have a walkable mixed-use development oriented along a central pathway that follows the creek. The plan encourages development that will create a dense environment such as retail, restaurants, office uses, hotel accommodations, and housing. The allowance of a car wash on the subject property does not align with the types of uses contemplated within the area under the city's planning policies. Additionally, a car wash would not create focus on a pedestrian-oriented development. The request is not in conformance with the recommendations of the Spring Creek Walk report. The site is more suitable for uses mentioned in the Spring Creek Walk report, such as office, retail, restaurant, and personal service shops. There are many commercial zoning districts in the city that allow car washes by right. Another issue is the residential adjacency standards. There is a, an existing multifamily development on the north side across Park Boulevard. However, Park Boulevard is a type C thoroughfare, so the site does not need to comply with the residential adjacency standards. The applicant did submit a noise study that states the car wash will comply with the city's noise ordinance. However, if noise complaints are concerned, it may be a substantial cost for the owner to bring the property into compliance once developed. We did not receive any responses within the 200 foot buffer. We did receive two responses total and both responses are in opposition. And as mentioned earlier, a concept plan um, has been submitted as a B item to this request. The purpose for the concept plan is to show the proposed car wash development. This request is not in conformance with portions of the comprehensive plan and is not in line with the Spring Creek Walk Master Plan report goals. For these reasons, staff is not in support of this request. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, I have a question. There was a slide up where you said something about the public mini storage being, um, go back. There, there it is. The, one back. Okay. The rezoning request in 2007 restricted car wash uses as a compromise to allow the mini warehouse use. So is this the same uh, owner or same applicant that owns the mini storage or, or at the time did? I don't believe it's the same owner as okay. the mini warehouse, but we worked with the owner of the mini warehouse when that request came forward Okay. as a compromise. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? No? All right. Yeah. Commissioner Smart? Uh, uh, adjacency. Um, I went up and visited about 5:45 on Sun on uh, Monday, and uh, I noted that there are only four apartments in Chisholm Place that actually look out in this direction uh, with pati with uh, terrace with patios actually, and um, they are now looking right now looking at a mini storage warehouse, and uh, directly to the west is a rather busy racetrack. So I'm a little at a loss to figure out how uh, this is going to substantially increase noise, potential noise complaints, or uh, the aesthetics of the site. The aesthetics of the site are not especially um, attractive today. And there appear to be only four units that would be affected by being able to actually site uh, the car wash. So I was a little um, at odds with staff recommendation when I saw that. Can you explain what residential concerns there could be with concerns about residential adjacency you might have seen? Sure. The residential adjacency standards don't apply since Park C is a type C thoroughfare, but we did want to be mindful since there is a residential zoning district to the north of the property. Um, Mr. Hill, do you want to explain that? Yeah, I think um, Ms. Follett is correct. You know, we're just trying to be thoughtful about the residents right now. There may not be any noise issues uh, as the applicant has provided, and we stated in the report, they did provide a noise study uh, that showed that the business could comply with uh, the city's noise requirements. I think we're just thinking long term, you know, there may be issues uh, that arise, uh, there may be complaints from the residents uh, that come up, and then having to retrofit the property to, you know, 
update the machinery or add additional noise mitigation may be expensive. And additionally, I think, you know, overall, uh, there, there may be better uses for that location. As we mentioned, you know, there's lots of properties in the city that allow car wash by right, including, you know, within, I think, 500 feet from this location. So does the city really need to rezone additional property for this use? Um, that, that's kind of the question that we're asking. Does it meet the city's comprehensive planning policies? You know, our analysis showed that it doesn't fully meet those. And then really as a a best practice, you know, best in future land use for that location is a car wash. Um, what the city's, you know, does it meet the city's needs and kind of goals long term for that that location? Now, now the bike trail is going to be uh, is going to have some insulation uh, because there's city there's actually city park land between the bike trail and this this tract right here. Uh, that's correct, isn't it? There's trees in the park. Are going are extensive right now. I, I think there's even a stream below there. There it is. Um, there, there, there's even a stream there, and that's not likely uh, to be uh, attenuated in any way by the building of the a car wash. So, from a sightline standpoint, um, the only place that there's going to be any concern, there could be any possible concern, is with residential adjacency, is directly across the street. That's and correct. They're already looking at a mini warehouse right now, SMU. That, that is correct. So okay. okay. Um, no. oh, one second. Well, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to point out that I think that the noise from the car wash might be a deterrent to the uh, benefit for the public related to the parkland, to the public enjoyment of that parkland, and that's something else the commission might want to consider. Mr. Kerry? Yeah, as, as I look at this, um, this property seems somewhat isolated. There's, there is to the east the already the pretty heavily wooded site. And while I'm, I think you make some interesting points about uh, the, the citizens, there also, um, you know, I have some concern for the property owners trying to balance that as well and to try to be fair-minded about it. Um, but as you said, within 500 feet, there is a, where well, we could put a uh, car wash in there. It seems to me then because of that, that, that the suitability of a car wash in this area really isn't the issue. To me, it would seem that would be this particular piece of property may have a better use down the road is, is what I'm getting from your presentation, quite frankly. So my question is, it, does, does that seem accurate to you, my comments? Uh, yes, I think, you know, there's uh, Greenfield property in the city is, you know, much less than it was previously. And uh, as we look long term about uh, those locations, you know, what what are the city's goals for those properties that remain? Um, should it be to, you know, uh, pursue other businesses and things like that, which may contribute to a better situation at this location that, that could contribute to the you know, lives of the residents and the parkland and, and um, just honestly offer something other than a car wash, which is currently allowed in close proximity to the site, or should it be reserved for something that perhaps could be a better a better use there? Yes, this is a it would be it's a restriction that's on the property right now, but it was one that was volunteered by the previous uh, requester to balance out the mini warehouse use, uh, which you know obviously needed rezoning as well. So um, we understand the property has remained vacant for some time, and there's been you know an existing restaurant and. There's a personal serve shop, a dry cleaner there as well. Um, but I, I think that's that's really the question that we're trying to get the commission to answer is, is what do you see as really the best potential use for this? Should it be uh, the request before you this evening or should it be a potential other use uh, further down the line? Great. Thank you. I'm sure Downs? Uh, I'm making an assumption here, but assuming this is well above the floodplain in this area. That close to the creek, it, it just, I've seen that area before where I felt like, and I'm a little concerned with a car wash, the chemicals and everything else, even though I know there's new stuff, new technologies and everything else. I'm a little concerned about the proximity of the creek and the potential for uh, an accident. So, floodplain, are you aware? We didn't receive any concerns from the engineering department uh, related to the floodplain. They will have to uh, treat their water. Uh, in accordance with the city's and, and state regulations. So at this time, we haven't heard any concerns about that issue. 
Okay. I have other concerns, but I'll wait until we get to the. Mr. Horn, um, I go through this area almost many times a day because I used to work in that area. Uh, there are two car washes one mile to the north on Parker and Alma. Um, I'm not sure this area here needs another car wash, particularly when it detracts from the upward development of the area. We have the Robinson <laughs> Fine Arts Center there now. And of course, we got the Collin Creek Mall redevelopment. So, all that combined with the shrinking amount of land to be redeveloped in the city or developed in the city of Plano, I think there would be better uses for this property by not adding another car wash than the one mile radius. <coughs> Furthermore, the car washes, it's just not consistent with the urban design of this uh, Spring Creek walkway. It's just not there. I think there'll be better uses for this particular piece of property. Any questions for staff? Mr. Uh, yes, Ms. Folletta, uh, did you have any discussions with the owner about uh, a landscape berm or living screen in this area uh, that fronts on uh, West Park? Was there any discussion about something to screen and hide this building a little bit? No screening requirements, but they do have a 10-foot landscape edge off of Park Boulevard. But no thought of a berm or some sort of we obstacle? Discuss that. Okay, thank you. Any further questions for staff? No? Thank you. We will now open the public hearing. Does the applicant wish to address the commission? Yes, we have Derek Evans. Mr. Evans. <clears throat> Good evening, commissioners and staff. Uh, Derek Evans. Um, I live in Decatur, Texas, uh, but I spent a, a large part of my life in Plano, kindergarten through high school. Very familiar with this area. Um, the only time I left Plano was to uh, join the Marine Corps after September 11th. And uh, you know, I re returned in, in uh, 2006. I've been doing private business since, and it has always been a dream to return back to my hometown and uh, provide the residents of Plano, especially this area, uh, with just exceptional services. Um, so with that, I have a presentation. It's up. Uh, we could just go ahead and uh, skip to, well, slide two first, if you don't. Thank you. Just to give everybody a, a street view for, from my understanding, I think everybody's kind of taken a peek at what we have here. And it's an interesting case, so I appreciate the comments. And honestly, I wouldn't be here today um, to give this presentation if I didn't think that there was significant technical merit uh, that um, that really is on our side of things as it relates to the zoning commission type of decision. And that's what this presentation is all about. So can I get the next slide, please? Thank you. So on... This slide is just giving us a little overview. Um, and the reason I believe I present a strong case uh, before the zoning commissioners to approve our proposition uh, to amend PD 195 CC to allow for automated car wash use is really for three key reasons. Uh, one, all other planned development districts that abut the Spring Creek and Chisholm Trail uh, features were extensively reviewed in the 1999 uh, rezoning of 1,700 acres to corridor commercial and were approved with stipulations where all land uses within the PD shall permit those uses permitted in the corridor commercial district and any use permitted by specific use permit within the CC district may also be permitted within the PD by specific use permit. Car wash is allowed and corridor commercial zoning storage facilities actually require um, special use uh, permits in the CC district zoning. Uh, secondly, PD 195 CC was not developed as originally presented uh, to staff, commissioners, and city council, leaving lot four, a small 1.38 acre track, isolated, undeveloped, and boxed in by a dry cleaner and a storage facility, making it very unlikely to be developed for most uses uh, being encouraged by the Spring Creek Walk Master Plan. It's, it's truly a unique situation. Further, plan development 6002 on the west side of Alma there's a very large uh, mixed use, I believe, office development project that's absorbing pretty much cons considerable, if not all, demand for any type of general office use. Otherwise, I really think that this uh, location would have been developed uh, by now. 
lastly, our site plan has met all residential adjacency standards, even being across from the thoroughfare C. We still give ample consideration to that fact. Um, uh, we, what we believe is that our approval really should boil down uh, to uh, uh, making all the residential adjacency standards. After a thorough review of the history of PD 195 CC and the president that was established by ZC 9947 as it relates to plan development districts within the corridor commercial district. Uh, we can go to slide four real quick. I just want to break down a quick history. I think the chronology of how things developed in this case is important to consider uh, for, for the commissioners. In 1990, the Spring Creek Walk Master Plan was adopted as part of the comprehensive plan of 1986. I understand that we're still uh, following that playbook, slightly amended. Uh, in 1999, the lot and surrounding land was zoned uh, corridor commercial in ZC 9947, passing overwhelmingly a uh, six to one vote in the city council. Uh, on February 5th, 2007, the zoning case 2636, uh, which is the plan development 195 CC, proposed to develop a 165,000 square foot L shaped public storage mini warehouse site plan that went all the way up to uh, Park Boulevard. Staff recommended denial in this case, and the Zoning Commission also agreed a 5-2 vote for denial. In April 2007, Zoning Ordinance 2007-422, PD-195, the appeal was passed by City Council in a 6-1-1 uh, vote with one council member believer accusing himself. In 8-22-2007, uh, the, the deed was accorded to Plano Ventures, and then an eight-year period of inaction uh, went by. I, I assume that the original PD and the developers of the public storage project it probably fell apart due uh, to insolvency created by the 2008 financial crisis. That's just a hunch. In April of 2015, Lot 3 was replatted to divide Lot 3 and create a Lot 4. Uh, in 2016, uh, the construction of a one building storage facility was developed on Lot 3 only, leaving Lot 4 isolated undeveloped, again, boxed in by storage and a dry cleaner uh, to the direct west and dense tree foliage to the east. Um, we can go, we can skip all the way to slide eight. <clears throat> Thank you. So something that I found to be uh, interesting about the PD 195 CC uh, was it prohibits certain uses like car wash explicitly, um, you know, and I, from all the information that we gathered and, and watching the city council meeting on a DVD we requested from staff, you know, it really was, uh, it was uh, about limiting vehicular type of use, but interestingly enough, it allows other certain types of uses to include used vehicle dealer and, and a motorcycle sales. So that just kind of seemed a little bit inconsistent uh, for the reasoning, you know, to limit. Um, <clears throat> plan development 195 CC is the only plan development district within the corridor commercial district established by ZC 9947 uh, that disallows uses uh, that are permitted within the CC district. Um, in the spirit of fairness, I, I don't find that exactly fair, but the plan development districts that interact with the Spring Creek water feature, PD 469 CC, uh, the northwest corner of Highway 75 and 15th, uh, abutting the east side of Spring Creek Chisholm Trail, uh, the land it specifically states land uses shall be restricted, strong language restricted to those permitted within the CC district. Again, PD 474, which is the other plan development district that interacts with the Spring Creek water feature. Uh, it's on the northeast corner of 15th and Alma, directly abutting the west side of Spring Creek Chisholm Trail. Uh, it says any use permitted within the CC district shall be permitted. Any use permitted by specific use permit within the CC district may also be permitted within the plan development by specific use permit. I believe the stipulations put forth on the on the plan development districts of ZC 9947 that were extensively reviewed uh, by the Zoning Commission and City Council establish a precedent that should be observed without bias uh, for all their plan development districts that fall within corridor commercial district. As we'll see on the next slide uh, in 2007, when considering this case, uh, Zoning Commission and, and the staff at the time were, were also in agreement to this. <clears throat> uh, 
the biggest thing I want to take away from from this slide and, and, and respect the time, I'm, I'm going to hurry this up. But Phyllis Gerald, the then director of planning at Vice City Council, uh, the Corridor Commercial District allows a broad range of uses. And certainly there are other uses that might be allowed by right that you may not feel would be appropriate on this location as well. When you zone a piece of property, you have to be willing to allow the uses that are allowed in that district. And if you feel the uses aren't appropriate, it may be time to take a look at the district itself. But generally, if you have established a set of uses in a zoning district, those should be appropriate any place where that particular zoning district is appropriate. And this is one of the reasons why the applicant of PD-195 is willing to restrict the property by prohibiting a number of uses. In the past, we have counseled city council not to pick and choose like that. <clears throat> Again, up, up at the planning and, and zoning and commissioner level, uh, the zoning commission voted 5-2 to recommend denial of PD-195CC. Had the commission's recommendation been followed by city council, lot four should still be zoned as CC, allowing for our use. All I ask at today's meeting is, is consistency in, in the, the decision making of the technical merits as it relates to zoning. A vote to amend PD 195CC to allow for our use is congruent to the decisions that were made by commission when hearing ZC 2006-36 and 2007. <clears throat> On slide 10. This is what was promised to uh, city council that, that I believe had an influence in reversing their decision. Some of the specific comments uh, that, that they responded with to staff concerns was the current zoning does not dictate building arrangement or prohibit screening walls. The proposed development ensures an attractive and inviting view from future Spring Creek Walk. Uh, the building arrangement and screening walls uh, will isolate the site. You know, these, are, these are the things that were brought forth to uh, the city council to reverse that decision. And of course, there's a render of what their view uh, was supposed to look like uh, from the Spring Creek. And on the next slide, you can see their site plan that they put forth was just a monstrosity of a, of a, of a development here. I mean, there was, I want to say nine or 10 buildings. I might have actually lost count of them on the site plan when I was late. Then. But uh, it was originally an L-shaped storage development. And of course, uh, as I already stated, it was not uh, developed as it was presented. And on the next slide, this is what was delivered, and this being the unintended consequence of passing the plan development 195 and, and really going against the commission's recommendation on it. And, and as you can see here, I mean, this is a recent enough photo. It's not such a bad view. It does it does look like an office building type of thing from the trail. But you know, if there is any trail developed on the west side of the creek, which which is listed as a goal in the Spring Walk, Creek Walk report, n no such trail exists currently. But this is what they're going to see as they're passing by, and I, I don't see how this uh, kept the promise of preserving the integrity of the Spring Creek Walk plan. Uh, this is their current view, of, and there's vehicular and, and trailer type of storage on the east uh, facade of the building. <coughs> on uh, Next slide, please. Thank you. This is just the, the final uh, storage plot, you know, that was approved. And, uh, of course, just it really just boils down, you know, to what I've said, which left lot four isolated. It's tucked in between uses that are that are tough to attract any kind of other other different private development. It's absolutely perfect, you know, for uh, car wash development. And uh, on lot three, you've got a rectangular, 128,000 square foot, one building, not nine different buildings. And, and it certainly didn't accomplish the objective of, of to preserve the view from the Spring Creek. <coughs> Mr. And Evans, you Mr. have three minutes left. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Evans, I, I don't want to tell you how to do your presentation, but do you have something you can show us about what your development might look like? What Absolutely. Might look like? Absolutely. If, if you, uh, matter of fact, if you, if we skip all the way to uh, slides 30, 29, 31. <clears throat> They're, they're the last. They're the last pages. I'm sorry. There are some renders, of course. We, I think that our development here will uplift what's what's currently there. I don't want to insult anything or, or be disrespectful to anything, but I think I heard the comment earlier that it's not exactly. The most beautiful thing that anyone's ever seen. I I think that 
adding this development and in the in the uh, in the vision that we have for it uh, with the uh, high grade uh, building construction materials that we will use to include uh, landscaping and the whole nine yards. You know, I think that we're going to beautify you know this this specific area. <clears throat> Just another thing, a couple of things that I did, you know, want to mention. Um, it's a, a couple slides back, and it's really concerning residential adjacency standards. Just one thing I really want to harp on is we, I believe so much in this project that, you know, I'm, I'm here today after starting this in February, going back and forth with staff. And thank you so much for a great job uh, helping us along the way. That We've had five revision rounds, you know, and, and the best thing I could say about residential adjacency standards is we 100% comply. You know, we're 150 feet away from the residential district boundary, 190 foot away from the apartment complex line. And I can, I can go down the line of sites in Plano that are just, I mean, you could throw a tennis ball into the backyard of homes from where uh, a tunnel exit can go across the map and show proven symbiotic relationship between these businesses. So again, and lastly, the reason why I'm here is I believe in this site. It's gone undeveloped for this long for this reason. The view from the Spring Creek Walk is completely obstructed. And, and one thing that I did want to say, <clears throat> that I made sure I wrote this down in my notes. And I could talk to you about the evolution of the car wash industry and all the technological advancements and all that good stuff. But I think that you guys know that it's not the same business that had a bad stigma prior to 2007. This is all top-notch new stuff. And uh, for the sake of it, I don't think a new car wash has been built in Plano since 2012. And you know, there are other cities that are rapidly uh, growing. I understand Plano is a more mature city. Uh, but Fort Worth, Frisco, uh, McKinney, uh, Allen, they've become much more favorable favorable to this type of use because it takes a smaller footprint. It's got extremely cool technology. It's eco-friendly. Uh, it helps the city accomplish uh, water objectives. Uh, and it's 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 something that's extremely high demand for, from, for residents. They deserve it. Yes, but the last thing I want to say, and it's really in a specific uh, uh, rebuttal to a staff comment in the uh, summary. Mr. Evans, you've, you've I'll wrap it up right here. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but we are 100% open-minded, you know, to a private-public partnership. I noticed that you have the Spring Creek Master Walk has an idea for a sculpture. I would 100% love to be a part of uh, entering into a development agreement with the city of Plano. Another thing I wanted to bring up is just some of these other planned developments had stipulations like the required improvement of a 10 foot wide concrete walk and the existing adjacent pedestrian easements. I'm, I'm very willing to do that from West Park all the way down. This would establish the beginning of a pedestrian trail that that's on the west side of the Spring Creek where no, where no such trail exists. I'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for your time, for your consideration. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, any questions for the applicant? I have one um, briefly. Is any part of the car wash self-service or is it all um, done by employees? So this is a, an express exterior type wash, the most popular in the market these days. And it, and it is uh, the, the self-service aspect of this, the free vacuum stations, which we have 18 of them in the, in the site plan. And really what that does is, and it, what the studies have shown is that people love that, people enjoy that. What that also does is it really increases the rate of flow of traffic you know, through the site where there's not, you know, some of the problems of the old car wash uh, full services uh, was was just cars stacking up, you know, and not processing the vehicles quickly enough, and and that's that's exactly what this type of model, you know, has addressed. Is it open twenty four hours? No, sir. It complies with the residential JCC, so eight to eight. Okay. Additional questions? Um, so you're the developer, not an attorney hired by the developer. No, I'm I'm the owner, sir. Yes, sir. So with your profits, you might want to consider law school. I thought you did a great job. Thank you. Seriously, I I was prepared to say no, and uh, not now. Thank you. Um, I have a question. How many cars a day are you projecting to come through here? Great question. Our, our latest traffic counts on Park Boulevard show around 27,000 vehicles per day, 25 to 27,000. Uh, the industry generally takes 1 to 1.15% as a rule of thumb. So what, I, what we predict is somewhere between 
28 to 30 uh, vehicles per hour if that was equally spaced you know, throughout the hours of operation. Of course, that's not how it's going to happen. But our equipment package and technology package is handled to is designed to handle up to 400 percent of peak hour potential rates. Okay, thank you. I I uh, I concur with what uh, Commissioner Given said. He did a nice job presenting this. And uh, as as I look at this site, and I completely understand some of the concerns from staff. But I also look at this area and what I see that you've developed here, and especially it looks like you're working in concert with uh, planning staff. I, I'm, I'm impressed with what you're doing here, and, and I personally think it would be a, a benefit to this area. Thank you, sir. Any further questions for the applicant? No? Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any speaker cards on this item? We do not, but we have one individual that is tied to the project um, on the concept plan that wanted to register their opinion as in support of. Okay. With that said, I will close the public hearing and confine comments and discussion to the commission and staff. So, uh, <clears throat> similar to Mr. Gibbons, I was, I was really prepared to say no to this. I'm just concerned. Uh, I think that there might be a better use for this, but several things that you brought forward, including the recommendations from planning staff before about isolating uses that were already allowed within a, a design district, and I happen to agree with that, that concept. Um, I actually happen to office near there, and so I drive by it uh, frequently, and I've often wondered what would wind up in that, in that space. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little more maybe of uh, at the end there of your concept for this, but I got enough to kind of get a, a vision of, of what someone driving down the road might see there. Um, it's already, uh, it's interesting that dry cleaners has been in and out of business a couple of times and uh, not sure what will happen there. Costas is a, is a favorite place, but I don't see a lot of cars there frequently. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the rest of that corner and that's driving some of my decision making here, but um, I have to agree with Mr. Gibbons. You did a, an outstanding job um, supporting your 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 proposal here, and um, I, I think I'm actually going to vote in favor of it. I move approval uh, of the applicant's request. Second. A motion to approve by Commissioner Gibbons and a second by Mr. Commissioner Horn, I believe. Mr. Kerry. Okay. With that, I ask for your vote. And item 2A carries with a vote of 7 to 1. And agenda item 2B, uh, with no further presentation is needed, I believe, then we can vote on that. Move approval as uh, submitted. All right. Motion to approve 2B by Commissioner Gibbons and a second by Commissioner Kerry. Please cast your vote. And agenda item 2B carries with a vote of 7 to 1. Thank you very much. Our next item is agenda item number 3. Agenda item number 3 is a public hearing zoning case 2021-015. Request to rezone 2.9 acres located at the northeast corner of 15th Street and N Avenue from urban residential to planned development urban residential zoned urban residential applicant is TWC Westheimer Wilcrest limited good evening commission my name is Daniel Brassel I'm a planner the applicant is requesting to table the case to October 4th 2021 uh, staff recommends the commission accept the applicants request uh, to table the zoning case Any questions for staff? No? Thank you. We open the public hearing. Do we have any speaker cards? No, we do not. All right, I will close the public hearing. We can entertain a motion. Motion to approve. A second. All right, we have a motion to approve the request to table until October 2nd by Commissioner Samara and a second by Commissioner Walters. October 4th. I'm sorry, October 4th. And agenda item number three, the motion to table carries with a vote of eight to zero. Agenda item number four, please. 
Agenda item number four is a public hearing zoning case 2021-021. This is a request for a specific use permit for new deal new vehicle dealer on Point Acre located 14 feet from Windrose Avenue, 197 feet south of Winthrop Street, Zone Plan Development 65 Central Business 1, and located within the Dallas North Tollway Overlay District. The applicant is Legacy West Investors LP. The applicant is requesting a specific use permit for new vehicle dealer in a existing lease space in the Legacy West development. The land use plan designates the subject property as major corridor development. Dealerships and car sales are not specifically defined in the land use element. Therefore, even though it is a different style and function than larger dealerships, this new car dealership would be considered a commercial use. This request is in conformance with the economic development element. The associated new vehicles will be parked in the showroom and the adjacent parking garage. The subject property currently has 1,556 parking spaces in excess of the required parking. And in order to limit the impact of the business, the applicant is placing a restriction on the new vehicles to nine spaces. We did not receive any responses in the 200 foot buffer. And we did not receive any responses at all. The request is in conformance with the comprehensive plan and will complement the mix of uses within the Legacy West development. Staff recommends approval of this item with a maximum inventory of nine vehicles. That concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any technical questions for staff? No? Okay. Thank you. I will open the public hearing. Does the applicant wish to address the commission? Yes, they do. We have uh, first J.T. Fulton. Mr. Fulton is not online. <laughs> He's right here. He's right here. <laughs> Good evening. I'll be very brief. Thank you. Uh, for letting me speak. Uh, my name is J.D. Fulton, Senior Director of Property Management for Legacy West. Um, <clears throat> very quickly to the point, I'd just like to say we're extremely deliberate and intentional with who we lease space to at Legacy West. We don't lease space just to lease space, and I think if you've been up there recently, you've seen some of the wins we've had, specifically over the last 18 months with some of the brands we've been able to bring in. Uh, mm -hmm. We feel this is an absolute home run for the city of Plano for the Legacy West development and uh, residents up there. This is a best-in-class retailer, best-in-class use, and consistent with what we've already done up there. So that's all. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, I'll close the, do we have any additional speaker cards? Uh, we do. We have Brandon Padron with Lucid Motors online. So, pardon me, if I may leave the presentation in person, my name is... Uh, yes, good evening. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. But it seems that we have two. Yes. So, pardon me, commissioners. My name is Netta Hosseini. I'm with Kimley Horn. I will be leading the beginning of the presentation, and I'll be handing it off to uh, Mr. Brandon Padron, who's with Lucid themselves. So, we kind of just wanted to also have a physical presence in, in addition to our virtual presence. Um, so if that's okay, if I may proceed, thank you so much. Um, as I said, my name is Netta Hosseini. I am with Kimley Horn. I'm a professional engineer and also will be leading this presentation for Lucid Motors, who is requesting a specific use application for their use. Tonight, um, we'll be joined with, uh, as I mentioned, Senior Manager uh, Brandon Padron, Design Manager for Retail Development, Miguel Claros, Construction Manager, Alejandro Cordova, and the Real Estate Manager, Irene Lee. Um, we also have Melissa Stokinis from Interior Architects, who is the architect leading the interior um, and the facade, of, you know, design of the uh, of our building. And, and of course, you guys, Mr. You guys met Mr. J T. Fulton, who is the Assistant VP of Property Management for Legacy West. So, between myself and the team that I just presented, we are hoping to answer any questions you may have. As we just heard from the planning staff's report and presentation, we're here to request the commission to grant Lucid a specific use permit to open its retail studio for the sale of luxury electric vehicles at Legacy West. 
Before I go over some of the details about this property in our SUP application, I'd like to turn it back to Mr. Brandon Padron uh, to tell you a little bit about Lucid as a company, their vision, and their products. So, Brandon, I'm going to hand it off to you. And you are in Brandon. Yeah. Um, if you uh, don't mind going to the next slide, please. Uh, so yes, I, I, as I mentioned, um, my name is Brenda Verdon, and I'm a senior manager here at Atlas Motors in California. Um, and thank you for carving some time for us this evening. Uh, for those of us who are maybe a little less familiar who this is, uh, we're an American uh, automotive company specializing in electric vehicles. Um, founded in 2007, and we're based in the Bay Area in, in Newark, California. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. So our, our mission is. It's pretty simple. Um, we're looking to inspire the adoption of sustainable energy by creating the most captivating luxury electric vehicle and it's centered around the human experience. Uh, next slide. The, the first of which is, is the Lucid Air, um, which is, is what will be on display in, in our project in Legacy West. Um, so we're, we're very excited about that. Um, over the past uh, couple of years, over the course of the pandemic, uh, we've been opening retail locations across the country. Um, we call those locations studios. Uh, what we have for you is the first, this next part of the presentation um, is a few representative images that talk a little bit about what the studios are and some of the features. Um, so if we can hop to the next uh, next slide. Another, another shot of our, our car here. And hop to the next one. I can show you our first location, uh, which is in... Los Angeles at the Century City Mall. Um, generally, our studios are really striving towards a California modern atmosphere that is very much warm and inviting uh, with a high level of finish, a high quality customer experience that really speaks to the quality of what we would strive for in the car. Um, in the slide, please. Uh, our spaces are, are, are really organized um, around four areas uh, for, for the customer. Um, our intro space, which obviously the car is the hero in, in front of the store. Uh, our technology area, where we kind of introduce the, the innovations that we bring with, with, with the Lucid Air and our other, um, other technologies. And, and then our ownership area, where customers can really um, experience the car in more detail. Uh, next slide, please. So th this is our ownership area, where customers can touch and feel the CMF, uh, the colors, materials, and finishes of the car off on the left. And they can also uh, virtually configure a car, a car in our, our VR experience um, through our online configuration tool. Um, we also have limited uh, branded merchandise as well as uh, sales lounges for uh, customer engagement with our, with our staff. Uh, next slide. The, this is a, one of our locations in, in West Palm Beach, Florida, and Rosemary Square. Uh, next slide. And you can see here, again, a, a kind of really rich palette of materials. Um, our, our typical program for materials is, is a, a California granite for our, our main sort of feature wall that you see towards the rear here, uh, white oak planks on, on walls and ceilings and otherwise finished in kind of a warm, warm plaster with a porcelain tile flooring. Um, a lot of like strong branded graphics that, that tell the story of who we are and what our what technology is. Um, and, and a very sort of general inviting environment for customers to, to spend time here to, to learn about, about the technology and to hopefully be interested in, in our vehicle. Uh, next slide. This is another shot of what we call our CMF area where, where customers have um, kind of a really interactive experience with interior options, exterior options, as well as the, the inspiration video of, of where these options come from. Next slide. And then the uh, last project we'll end on before we talk about the design for, for the, the Legacy West project in particular. This is our, our one of our flagship locations in, in New York City, the Meatpacking District. Uh, next slide. Again, you can see here very sort of strong, strong luxury presence on the interior, same palette. And we try quite hard to keep the same brand presence in all of our locations. And, and a similar palette and attention to detail, this is what we bring to, to our location in Plano. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide again. 
So our, our location in Plano, it, it, it can follow that template pretty closely, um, obviously for the particulars of, of the suite that we have um, on the property, but working from the left to the right on the page, you have the street frontage um, with our, our vehicle and technology display in the sort of first third of the store, a, a pair of sales lounges as well as our VR, we'll call our VR box, basically our, our, our VR seating area for the VR experience, plus our, our CMF um, arrangement for the materials and finishes, and our merchandise on the rear wall of, of the main space. Um, working towards the right side of the plane is really where we have our office functions. Uh, typically, we have you know staff and about eight in the store, so that uh, supports the customers as well as the basic office functions. Um, and then our, our typical program for parking involves uh, a number of test drive vehicles for, for customer test drives to support the, the activities in the suite. Um, next slide. I do want to hand it back to Nina. It reflects our current site plan and um, outlined in red kind of zooms into where our, our, our location would be and then highlighted in yellow will be the parking stalls that we will, uh, we will be striping for our electric vehicles. So zooming in into that space, this 3,815 square feet existing uh, space will be utilized per that site plan that Brandon just covered. And then um, the image on the right is the existing facade of that, of that space. Uh, zooming into these uh, parking spaces, we will be striping six parking stalls for the Lucid vehicles to be both on display um, and it will provide charging stations. And we just would like to note that the charging stations themselves will not displace any additional parking stalls. So as staff review the property zoned central business and subject to the guidelines of PD65, we believe that the proposed studio is permitted by a specific use permit as a vehicle dealer new, which is defined in the ordinance as retail sales and releasing of new personal vehicles of light commercial vehicles. And um, it is our understanding that Lucid Studio will fulfill the purpose and intent of this SUP as defined by the ordinance. We feel confident that Lucid Studio will promote economic growth. It will benefit the general welfare of the community. Currently, our, 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 what we propose will occupy vacant space. It is not occupied. It will br bring additional foot traffic to the surrounding stores and restaurants. will create new jobs and drive market competition, giving Plano residents another option for electric vehicles. And lastly, the designing and constructing of a high-end studio experience that fits the character of Legacy West. And as you saw with other, uh, all of our other locations in, in the country, um, we really do feel that our design and our materials that we use will be a great fit for Legacy West. So switching to the next slide, I'm gonna send this back to Brandon to kind of talk about the exterior rendering. And so I, I think from the new to exterior perspective, we really strive for the same kind of modern appearance that we have on our interiors. Um, up above, we've got an oversized powder coat black metal panels. Um, we look for a very kind of clean appearance with a lot of attention to, to good detailing uh, with our illuminated uh, logo. Uh, the, the letter forms on the logo are, are brushed stainless steel with a halo lit. Um, illumination behind uh, for a soft glow. Uh, down below, we really look to kind of have a, an open glass storefront um, where the goal is really to have the facade get out of the way of the car for the most part. So we look to, to have a very, very clean detailing, very, very minimal structure as much as we can. So you have a really strong view of the car from the street frontage. Uh, I think it presents a really kind of compelling image along the street and we're really Quite excited about it. Um, next slide. A couple of shots of the interior for this particular proposal. You can see a lot of the themes that we showed in the reference images, which we're carrying forward. So this is again the first third of the store inside that, that storefront um, with the brand wall uh, in California granite behind the car, the, the white oak plank up above, um, 
in the next slide. And then a shot sort of towards the rear of the store where you see a lot, all of the customer ownership components that we showed earlier of the CMF experience on the right, the VR experience on the left, the sales lounges uh, scattered throughout. So yeah, this is very much in keeping with what we what we believe is, is, is our Blizzard program internationally, and, and, and we're excited to bring it here to, uh, to Plano and to Legacy West. Um, and so in closing, from my perspective, we're, we're, we're very excited about the project, and you know, we're, we're very excited to become part of the, the Plano community here. We'll send that back to the editor to wrap up for us. That concludes our presentation, and I did mean to mention that we have um, Mr. Michael Vogt, who is outside legal counsel, also present virtually. So if you have any specific questions about our SUP application, he's also present. Um, and I will send this back to you guys for any questions. Thank you so much for your time, and appreciate y'all's patience in our hybrid version of virtual and in-person presentation. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any additional speaker cards on this item? There are no additional speakers, but as stated, there are six tied to the project that are in support. Okay. I will close the public hearing and find comments and discussion to the commission and staff. I'd like to make a motion we approve agenda item number four with the maximum inventory of nine vehicles. Second. A motion to approve with the recommendation for maximum of nine vehicles by Commissioner Horn and a second by Commissioner Downs. Please cast your vote. And agenda item number four carries with a vote of eight to zero. Uh, agenda item number five, please. Agenda item number five is a public hearing, replant and revised site plan. Park playground on four lots on 70.8 acres located at the southeast corner of Independence Parkway and Mamal Drive. Zone single family residence nine with specific use permit number 66 for governmental service yard. Applicant is City of Plano. The replot is recommended for approval subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department and the revised site plan is recommended for approval. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any technical questions for staff? No? Thank you very much. We'll open the public hearing. Do we have any speaker cards on the item? Or an we, applicant? we do. We have uh, John Fielder online. Okay. Mr. Fielder, are you with us? Mr. Fielder? Yes, good evening. Sorry, I lost the connection there for briefly. Um, I'm, my name is John Fielder uh, with Kimley Horn, and I'm a landscape architect and project manager, and I've been working on this project with city staff, and uh, I'm excited to be a part of it. Uh, we started on this back in 2018 with the uh, master plan concept development through, uh, we developed through public meetings, and this is part of the uh, construction document preparation uh, to move, uh, you know, move the project forward through the first phase of improvements. Uh, I'm I'm happy to answer any questions that you have, and just uh, just here to uh, show support for the project and um, help answer any questions. Thank you. Any technical questions for the app, or any questions for the app applicant? No. All right. Thank you. Do we have any other speaker cards on the item? No, we do not. All right. We'll close the public hearing and have confined comments to the commission and staff. Move approval of the replat subject to additions and alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department and the revised site plan as submitted. Second. The motion to approve agenda item number five by Commissioner Downs and the second by Commissioner Horn. Please cast your vote. And agenda item number five carries with a vote of eight to zero. That brings us to agenda item number six. Agenda item number six is a public hearing, replat preliminary site plan and revised concept plan. Legacy West edition, block C, lots 8R and 12. Professional General Administrative Office on two lots on 6.2 acres, located at the southeast corner of State Highway 121 and Communications Parkway. Zone Plan Development 64, Central Business District 1, and located within the Do Dallas North Tollway Overlay District. Applicant is City of Plano. 
These items are recommended for approval as submitted, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any technical questions for staff? No? Thank you very much. I'll open the public hearing. Does the applicant wish to address the commission? We do not have any speakers. All right. No applicant, no speaker cards. I will close the public hearing and confine comments and discussion to the commission and staff. Make a motion we approve agenda item number six. Second. All right. Motion to approve agenda item number six by Commissioner Horn with a second by Commissioner Stone. Please cast your vote. And agenda item number six carries with a vote of eight to zero. Our next item is agenda item number seven. Agenda item number seven is a public hearing replat Plano West Retail Center, Block 1, Lot 1, Retail and Professional General Administrative Office on one lot on 15.7 acres located on the west side of the Dallas North Tollway, 865 feet south of Park Boulevard. Zone Plan Development 220 Regional Commercial and Regional Commercial and located within the North Dallas North Tollway Overlay District. Applicant is Costco Wholesale Corporation. Staff recommends approval as submitted. Any technical questions for staff? All right. Thank you. We'll open the public hearing. Does the applicant wish to address the commission? No, they do not, and we have no speakers registered. We'll close the public hearing and can find comments and discussion to the commission and staff. Move approval item seven is submitted. Second. A motion to approve agenda item number seven by Commissioner Downs with a second by Commissioner Gibbons. Please cast your vote. And agenda item number seven carries with a vote of eight to zero. Our next item is agenda item number eight. Agenda uh, nine. Uh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Agenda item number eight is a public hearing preliminary replat Assembly Park, Block A, Lot 1. 312 multifamily residences, retail, restaurant, and professional general administrative office on one lot on 26.3 acres located on the north side of Spring Creek Parkway, 468 feet east of K Avenue. Zone plan development 45 retail. Applicant is Plano Mall owner LP. This item is recommended for approval subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any technical questions for staff? No, thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Does the applicant or do we have any speaker cards? No, they do not, but they are available to answer any questions from the commission. Okay. Would the commission have any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, no additional speaker cards. I will close the public hearing and can find comments to the commission and staff. Make a motion we approve agenda item number eight. As um, at, with additions and alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department. All right, we have a motion to approve agenda item number eight with the, uh, by Commissioner Horn with the second by Commissioner Samara. Please cast your vote. Agenda item number eight carries with a vote of eight to zero. That brings us to agenda item number nine. Agenda item number nine is public hearing preliminary replat. Legacy Town Center North, Block C, Lots 2R and 6R. Professional General Administrative Office on two lots on 7.4 acres, located at the northwest corner of Bishop Road and Legacy Circle. Zone Plan Development 65 Central Business District 1 and located within the Dallas North Tollway Overlay District. Applicant is TR Legacy Town Center LLC and TR Legacy Circle LLC. Staff recommends approval subject to additions and or alterations as required from the engineering department. Any questions, questions, technical questions for staff? Seeing none? Okay, thank you. I will open the public hearing. Does the applicant wish to address the commission? They do not, but they are available to answer any questions from the co commission. Does the commission have any questions for the applicant? No. Do we have any speaker cards? No, we do not. Right. I will close the public hearing and can find comments and discussion to the commission and staff. Move approval item nine, subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department. 
Second. A motion to approve agenda item number nine by Commissioner Downs with a second by Commissioner Samara. Please cast your vote. And agenda item number nine carries with a vote of eight to zero. That brings us to agenda item number 10 in our non-public hearings. Non-public hearing items, the presiding officer will permit public comments for items on the agenda not posted for a public hearing. The presiding officer will establish time limits based upon the number of speaker requests, length of the agenda, and to ensure meeting efficiency, and may include a cum cumulative time limit. Speakers will be called and the order cards are received within the cumulative time is exhausted. Agenda item number 10 is discussion and consideration comprehensive plan update. Discussion and consideration of the Plano Com Comprehensive Plan 2021 draft plan as recommended by the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee. The applicant is City of Plano. Thank you. My name is Dan Sefko with Friesen Nichols. Uh, if it permits, I would like to uh, provide the Planning and Zoning Commission with a brief overview uh, before your deliberation this evening, if I may. Uh, just by way of introduction, uh, we've been at this since uh, November uh, 2019, uh, and the uh, ground rules have been that there is a 75% uh, agreement of all uh, recommendations by the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee and a simple majority by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, there's been a lot of work done uh, over the last year and a half. Uh, there's an agreement on many, many items. Uh, a lot of people have volunteered a lot of time and put a lot of effort into it. And virtually all uh, areas of the draft plan are in agreement with the PNZ and the CPR. There are a couple, two, or actually three outstanding uh, items which I'll touch on here in a minute. Uh, this is just a graphic to show that um, there has been a quite uh, a lot of volume and quite a lot of input and discussion over a lot of items. Um, we've worked very hard on trying to provide uh, uh, certainty and uh, a lot of other uh, attributes to the plan that would give proper guidance on uh, many land use issues. So uh, the out outstanding items, there's really three broad areas here that are uh, before you to consider to see uh, the RGM2, uh, which is uh, it was one of the most important tenets of the CPR committee that really their uh, their idea was is that there needs to be a really high bar for deviation for the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan is so important. It's not that you can't deviate from it, but uh, there should be uh, really a, a way to make sure that anything that deviates from that is well founded. Then secondly, RGM 5 and 6, uh, there was a, a much discussion about mixed use developments and making sure that there was a balance of uh, residential to non-residential. And then at the same time, attached to that is to make sure that uh, under, a, under a phasing consideration that the uh, residential really didn't outpace to a great extent uh, the non-residential uses. So a development would have uh, different land uses, but all the uh, multiple family or the residential, whichever the case may be, would all be developed first, and then the non-residential would uh, not be developed to a much later time. There was a, an attempt to try to balance that, that phase. Just to refresh your memory, uh, since uh, recently, since April 27th, uh, that was when the CPR committee made the recommendation to the plan to you all. And uh, you considered those changes, those, 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 the plan, and, and recommended five changes to the CPR on July 6th. They uh, approved three of the five and then made some uh, uh, changes to the remainder. And then uh, they re uh, recommended those back to you, and you considered those on 
uh, July 19th. Uh, approved were uh, RGM1 and the others were sent back to the CPR for uh, consideration. So since that time, some of you may be aware that there was a meeting of the chairs of the Planning and Zoning Commission and the CPR. And it was an effort to try to lay some uh, or set the table, so to speak, on how we might uh, arrive at consensus on the remaining uh, items. And so that was the basic uh, meeting that created uh, some uh, basis for the recommended changes that became that came before the CPR that the CPR made on the 17th, and so they had a vote of 12 to 3. There was much deliver, deliber, deliberation, and we're going to talk a little bit about those items here in a minute. But that just sort of uh, uh, identify or lays out the chrono the chronology that that occurred. Okay, so. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, changes to the comprehensive plan, it was the CPR felt very strongly that there had to be an explanation, and this occurred in the way of findings, uh, that uh, whenever a zoning petition, there was a deviation from the dashboards within the comprehensive plan, that uh, there was a well-founded uh, thought process on changing those. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission had some concerns with the adoption of an ordinance that might require that. And the CPR was open to a process being an ordinance or a, po a policy, and that's really uh, where it stands now. This was also a basic agreement between the chairs. So the way it's presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission this evening is it's a ordinance or po policy. Uh, we, we share the concern, uh, the, the, the consultant and the, and, and the staff shares PNZ's concern that an ordinance would, uh, would be uh, not what we would normally do. This is styled, the plan is styled as all plans, as a policy. And, and so we think it ought to be a policy, but uh, we also acknowledge that this language will actually be a council decision at the end. The, and and to, to, to also add to this, this I issue of whether it's an ordinance or a policy is going to be well vetted throughout the remaining process. Remember, we have a public uh, open house that we're planning. A date has not been set, but we're planning that. And it also needs to be uh, approved by the city council. Um, it, anything that is... Uh, the, in, in, in the realm of this will still require a separate process to adopt a policy or an ordinance uh, recommended by the plan. And of course, you all are going to be a part of that process if, if such a uh, process does begin. The, um, also, as a result of some of the discussion on uh, July 23rd, there was a discussion about uh, to allow approval of multi-use development greater than 50% residential, uh, where findings justify such uh, deviation. Uh, the, the, the CPR here, again, believed it was important that all aspects of the dashboard uh, be considered when uh, justifying this approval, but uh, that it could be accomplished. CPR agreed to combine recommendations of the Planning and Zoning Commission and their selves, the, CI, the, the C, CPRC. And there was also uh, a, a change in and rewording of the max. If you remember, the maximum ratio was two to one. There was some discussion about what that really meant. But uh, that was reworded to put a minimum percentage of 33% simply to add uh, clarity. The, uh, there were some grammar improvements as suggested by the Planning and Zoning Commission, some syntax and to avoid repetitive language. And the original PNC direction to staff at the 21st meeting was reword. Uh, based on this direction, uh, the CPR, uh, it was suggested that the CPR remove the second sentence. And uh, that's what uh, actually 
it was reworded, although it's not in the glossary, it is uh, reworded. So, uh, kind of to summarize where we are this evening, is that uh, our sense, the staff is getting a lot of questions from the public, a lot of calls, and so we sense that there is a, a there is an eagerness by the public to review the draft plan, and so uh, this is based on public inquiries, but it seems like that the public is ready to consider the work that's been done by the CPRC and the Planning and Zoning Commission. Just a reminder, there's great consensus on 98% of the plan. There's been much work. Um, it's a good plan for Plano and has a lot of uh, input from all perspectives. Um, it, the CPR's August 17th uh, recommendation for RGM2 is really a workable uh, solution to move forward to the public out outreach. As we mentioned, there's still further consideration to be considered. And so we think that through that process, there's still going to be an opportunity for the Planning and Zoning Commission to still consider the final look of the comprehensive plan. But we believe that the open house, the public outreach, however it's termed, is really going to be the litmus test that we'll be able to determine if it meets the the needs of the citizens of Plano. Our recommendation is to approve the draft tonight as presented. Uh, if, if, if after this, uh, one of two things could happen, uh, we could move forward to the public feedback if the Planning and Zoning Commission chooses to approve it. If not, uh, whatever your suggested amendments are, uh, we would take those to the City Council on September 13th for consideration. And so that really concludes our presentation. I'll uh, check with Michael Bell. Did I miss anything? Okay, we captured most of it. Uh, that, include, that concludes our presentation, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we'll turn it back over to you. Of course, uh, the staff and the consultants will be here for any discussion and deliberation. Thank you, Mr. Sepko. Um, I know we've all been putting a lot of time into this, and we're 98% there, but let's discuss the 2%. Commissioner Downs. Um, I would argue that we're 99.9% .9 of the way there. Um, I, you know, I've been a part of the chair discussions, um, as well as most of the other discussions, I guess, around this. And uh, let's start with RGM 5.6, which is, um, I, I I thought it came out great. I think what they came up with in terms of the phasing is good. The allowance for more than 50%, again, justified my findings. I, I don't really have any issues with that at all. Um, so I, that piece there is good. I think they did some great work on the language, uh, pulling that together. Um, RGM2. Um, one one second. Let's let's break them down. Okay. Let's let's just let since we've started with five six, let's get a consensus on five six, okay. and then let's discuss two. Does anyone have any issues with the revisions to five six? Would you put the revisions up, please, for us to read the uh, actual verbiage? Thank you. One of the, the points with 5-6 that it's not in this, this history, if I recall correctly, was that the last time we saw it, it basically said nothing more than 50%. Uh, but then it was stated to us, well, but you could with findings. And so we said, well, then great, put that in there, because that was not in there before. It was a complete bar. And CPRC uh, added that language, saying that it would be permissible with findings. Um, so I think that made a big a big difference in what we were presented with on the fifty percent issue. And then the other part of it is the obviously is the uh, phasing of the developments and the square footage and what. And I agree with Commissioner Downs that I think we're at a point where I'm comfortable with the language that's here in five six, and would like to hear from the rest of you guys. 
I think ultimately the, the big issue that, that we had was that it felt like CPRC was trying to sort of tie the hands of PNZ and, and council, which seemed inappropriate. Um, that's definitely been softened here. Um, I would say it's not perfect still. Uh, I still feel like it's uh, sort of legislation from a inappropriate source. But, um, you know, if this gets us to move on, maybe we have to do that. Right. Mr. So, Chairman, I, I've looked at RGM 5 and 6, uh, and I agree with uh, the others. It may it, There may be a word or two here or there, but my view is it's time to close ranks and move ahead. We've got we still got a lot of work to do in the months ahead. We need to get started. Mr. Kerr? I, I, uh, I concur with Commissioner Stone. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot of good work done on this. And I think there's been a lot of compromise um, from people who at times view things very differently. And so, you know, we had a 15 to 0 vote on this and now we're at 12 to 3. And I Regretfully, I wish we still had a 15 to 0 vote because I think ultimately um, th that would be more powerful and better. But here's where we are today, and, and so I concur. I think that what we have here is a great place to step forward. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more work to do, so I'm in favor of this. Commissioner Smart? Um, in the past, I have uh, expressed concern about tying the hands of our elected officials. Um, or tying the hands of PNC through compromise uh, from um, um, the heads of each commission. Um, I wish we had not um, um, engendered uh, any discussion at all about phasing and what constitutes multi-use, which doesn't constitute multi-use because I think the landscape and the geography and the remaining property in our city end up taking all of this out of our hands. We're currently in an apartment building boom across the United States of America, and we may not be in three years or five years or seven years from now. So um, I'm concerned about tying the hands uh, through multi-use at all, but I also think we have the opportunity here to um, pull five, six out and vote the rest of the plan through and allow public commentary and our elected officials to take over at this point. So I'm, I'm going to vote to move this plan forward no matter what we decide about 5-6. Okay, that's my thoughts on it. It's a comprehensive plan. Com Commissioner Walters, any comments? Yeah, I, I agree. It's time to move on. Uh, I'm comfortable with, with moving this forward. Okay, so you're comfortable with 5-6, yes. Commissioner Walters? Yep. Well, first, uh, Mr. Sefko, thank you very much for helping Chairman Shockey, who's in the audience with the CPRC, in putting this plan together. I've watched many hours of uh, the meetings, and they were heated discussions within your group. That's why you saw it went from 15 to 0 to 12 to 3. So um, I see that through the iterative process we went through here, we struck. RG5, RGM5 twice. And now after the chairman's meetings, it seems that we come up with a, a good compromise here. So I'm comfortable with this particular element to push it forward uh, within, within the, uh, again, RGM5 and move that forward within the comprehensive plan. I sense the consensus on these two items. Um, so I don't want to call for a vote yet. Let's 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 discuss RGM two now, uh, Commissioner Downs. I'd cut you off before. I'll let you that's, pick that's it back fine. up. That's fine. Thank you. Um, uh, I don't believe RGM two belongs in a comprehensive plan. Do I believe that discussion should take place at PNZ and Council around how to structure findings, etc.? Yes, but I don't think that's something that should be mandated in a plan. I think it should take place outside of that. If you read RGM 1, the very last sentence, such approval would be carefully deliberated, justified by findings after gathering and considering substantial community input. Um, that's accomplishing what RGM 2 is wanting to do. RGM 2 is simply saying we need to somehow or another 
uh, create a legal standard, or in this case, a policy or an ordinance. Um, so I, I'm uncomfortable and would not vote this through to public hearings because I, I know that in a future meeting, when this brings up, I'm going to say I'm not going to vote for this if this is in the plan. So I won't want to start public commentary and input from a document that I'm not willing to say I'm, I'm in agreement with this. So that, that's where I stand on RGN2. And if, if there's a way if staff says, look, you can approve everything and then make a recommendation to council or in some way, short, shape, or form, make sure council has an opportunity to discuss how this is going to happen outside of it being a part of the comprehensive plan, I'm all for it. I'm all on board. I just don't think that you should be making a recommendation like this inside the comprehensive plan. It should be a part of the process outside of the creation of the plan. And and, and that concept was actually presented to CPRC, or at least in the chair's meeting, that you take that out, you don't delete it, but that CPRC make that a separate recommendation to council, but not part of the plan. And they... Um, declined to do that and have left it in and have left the word ordinance in. I know it says and or policy, but the word ordinance is there. And I agree with Commissioner Downs. A comprehensive plan doesn't have a section that requires a city to pass an ordinance. That's not what a comprehensive plan is. It's just not. And that word ordinance does not belong in this plan. And I could support the passing of this with five and six, but not with two and if that's what happens then we have a meeting on the 13th with council and we can seek their direction on, on how they would like to proceed with that because i think we all are in agreement that findings are a good idea sure. and that findings should be required but the mechanism of that doesn't necessarily belong in a comprehensive plan that is a separate issue in my opinion other thoughts i, Mr. Gibbons? I concur with what's already been said Mr. Horn. Uh, two elements within uh, the RGM uh, two. One is you already. I agree with you about the ordinance. I do not think an ordinance or requirement to have an ordinance should has a place within a comprehensive plan. It, it's it's just it is a guideline that we have that we're going to use in the future with uh, growth in Plano. But the other element that I have here is the issue of findings. And I don't have any problem with delivering findings uh, if we deviate from the comprehensive plan. But we already have a record. We have a video conference. It's now on YouTube. That's uh, international. We have Plano TV. And so the, it's in the spirit of transparency, anyone can see our meetings. Okay? And I think when you have findings and you start writing findings, you lose the nuances that led to our decision. Uh, there may be heated discussions. They'll be polite and cordial, but they could be heated discussions as to why we went one way or the other. It's those nuances that um, I think will be missed when we produce findings. So this is why I have an issue with the word ordinance in there, because of the issue of that. Thank you. Uh, if I can add to what Commissioner Horn just said, whenever we have a close vote, there's already something called a second vice chair's report that I yeah, have to write. You're, and it in goes essence, to city you're council. already, we, we thought you're right. We, we thought you were already doing that. You, we you are. really it's, almost already have the findings already. Yeah, and, and I hate having to write that thing, yeah. <laughs> quite honestly, for the very reason that Commissioner Horn just said, because I can't possibly put into words on a piece of paper the true spirit of how that decision was arrived at. It just doesn't do justice. So, again, I concur with, with what's already been said. Any other thoughts on RGM2 on its inclusion or exclusion? Commissioner Carey, any thoughts? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah, I would entertain a motion. Well, if I can, uh, a, a, a point of order here to help make your job easier on Monday, one way or the other. Good luck. I know. <laughs> Should we vote separately, collectively, with regards to RGM 5 and RGMs uh, 2? I'm fine with that. I'm just... 
Because that gets us, that would get us to 99.8% really. If... Well, I would make the motion that we approve what's been submitted with the exception of RGM 2. Yeah. Clarification. That brings us to one item only that's holding us back. So it would literally be Mr. Downs and, and, and uh, um, can we approve the plan as, as stated and extricate all of the all of these uh, issues of controversy that and could be one plan. motion that could be a motion i don't know if there's consensus to exclude all of it or not but that certainly can be a motion um with without a doubt i mean with regard to rgm1 we're talking about one sentence rgm2 you mean is it two sentences it's rgm2 two. i'm sorry rgm2 two. Two. It, it's it's we're literally talking about one sentence of the comprehensive plan um but I, uh, I serve it at y'all's pleasure, and if we want to take two votes, some one on five and six and one on two, that's fine. If we want to follow the potential motion to accept the plan other than RGM2, then I'm, I'm good with that also. Commissioner Kerry? Since we have the chair of the CPRC here, I wonder if we could have him speak to this at this point. Honestly, I'd rather not because I haven't spoken at their meetings, and I think we need to be a separate body. And we need to make our decision based on what's in front of us because we haven't interfered with their meetings in any fashion. And I personally think we should do the same. Doug, would you like to speak? Okay. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've done this. Uh, we spent a long time doing it when we had the, the chair's meetings. And this is, you know, we were, this is the issue. I think the simplest way to do it is if there's a consensus on five and six is one motion to approve at all other than two. However, we're, we can do a motion to approve neither one of them and, and go from there. Then could we uh, have a motion to approve it all with an amendment to two since there's one or two sentences that seem to be um, problematic here? Could we do that and, and strike those out? Because I, I personally would like to see this move for, for public review. And um, I have concerns that what we do here could could be seen negatively by the public, and there are reasons that um, that CPRC has been trying to inject this language. And if we think back, it started with the supermajority, and now they've compromised down to this, and and uh, and this is made up of you know 16 citizens, not 15, and uh, so they felt based on on. Uh, months of dialogue on this, that this was an important thing. And so um, I understand what everybody's saying here, and, and in many regards, I'm, I'm in alignment with that. With that said, um, I've been very interested in seeing what the public has to say about this, and I'm nervous well, that we're going to continue to delay it. Well, and I think if we if we change the language, then we're setting us up for another round of this, and it's going to go back to CPRC. Whereas as we take a vote one way or the other, we can go to council on the 13th and say, this is where we are. This board has approved this, and this committee has approved that. Um, and then get council's direction on how they would like us to proceed um, so that both bodies can take that direction and, and see where it goes, as opposed to making this wheel continue to go around and around, basically. Those are my, that's my thought. I would repeat my question with his first thought. This is one sentence out of the entire comprehensive plan, one sentence, which we just feel like is a very good question, but it doesn't belong in this document. That's the only thing. And again, <laughs> RGM1, the last sentence already says, you're going to have to justify everything by findings. So the whole part of this is just to say, look, we, we say in the plan, we're going to have to justify our findings. This simply says, look, council and or PMZ needs to create a mechanism to, to require that. That's great. But that request shouldn't be inside the plan. Stick it outside. How does PNZ make a recommendation to council to please consider this? Because then CPRC is getting what they want anyway. It just doesn't have to be in the plan, right? What is the mechanism for PNZ to say to P council, please consider a mechanism for requiring findings on anything that varies from the plan. I don't understand why it has to be in here and we can't just simply make that request from this organ this commission to council. Why why can't 
we do that. Well, That's I what I'm asking. I, I, I'm kind of lobbying here. Uh, well, but I, I know that you want us to pass it as it is and then let council take it. But some of us have a big problem with that section, and I don't feel at this point that it would pass in its entirety. Well, could you pass it and then relay that concern to the city council? I'm not that, comfortable that with passing it with that sentence. That doesn't there. look right. That we pass it and now we come back and, and then take another crack it. at it later. I just don't feel good about that. I feel like we need to go back to the motion that it sounds like Commissioner Down started to make in the first place. Did you finish it? I'm not even sure you no. the motion was finished. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I thought what you were asking is could you pull it out and make it a separate memo from the commission or something along yes. those lines? Yes. And because if we do that, and we go to council on Monday, and we say, look, we've approved everything. The only variance is this, but we're recommending you consider that anyway. It's just not Again, point. we're meeting the CPRC's objective, which is to have council consider a way to require findings. I don't understand why it being in the comprehensive plan, which is not, doesn't make sense that you have a plan that requires that you then take and place an ordinance, right? So, again, I, well, let's just go here. I made a motion, and we can either... Can you restate it, just for the record? For the record, I move we approve the plan as presented with the exception of RGM2, which should be removed from the plan and presented to council as a separate item for consideration. Okay. okay. We have a motion to approve the comprehensive plan, including the changes to RGMs 5 and 6, but with the deletion of RGM2, uh, but RGM2 would be presented to council as a separate item for consideration and not, and not part of the plan. And we have a motion by Commissioner Downs and a second by Commissioner Walters. And I'd ask that you please cast your vote. And agenda item number 10 carries unanimously with a vote of y'all's time and, and thoughts, everybody in the room um, with regard to that. Do we have any other agenda items? No, we do not. All right. Well, then at 8.58, I will call the meeting adjourned. Thank you.